All right, thank you very much. Um, uh, I, uh, my role is to say a few tentative bridging uh, words uh, before we move to the next panel, which is on human rights. Um, let me say, I, I realize the humble expression that was used quite a few times uh, this morning, this afternoon, the one that says, the one that says, uh, I'm here to learn. Uh, you can add my name to the list of individuals in that group, uh, because I'm definitely here to learn. Uh, and I've picked up a number of uh, important issues from the conversations uh, this morning and this afternoon. My main area of expertise, as was mentioned, uh, is in children's rights. Uh, but that's what I've done uh, pretty much my adult, my adult life. Uh, and I'm a newcomer to this conversation about climate change. Uh, I'm like that new arrival notification, uh, if you have it on your phone, uh, in relation to Netflix, new arrivals, and so forth. Now, but in this very brief time that I've been working on the topic, I have realized quite a number of things. Uh, one is that um, the topic is very complex. And I often call it 10% inspiration, 90% perspiration, because you have to sweat for it. Uh, you have to read and navigate, and it's an evolving field. Uh, I'm also realizing that uh, it's a topic that takes, just, not just only I, but also a number of us, it takes us out of our comfort zone. Uh, because quite, quite a number of the concepts are not concepts that we engage with uh, on a regular basis, especially those of us who come from the human rights field. So, in other words, some of the points that were mentioned this morning that I heard uh, pointed me in one direction. One that says, we have to question the solutions. We cannot take things for granted. That the assumptions, whether it's in relation to data, whether it's in relation to uh, empirical, ad other empirical evidence, whether it's in relation to assumptions and so forth, we have to be able to question the solutions. So let me just say a few remarks along those, those lines. Now, leadership that questions the solutions is absolutely important. President Museveni wrote uh, a piece on the Wall Street Journal in 2021 titled, and I quote, Solar and wind force poverty on Africa. Solar and wind force poverty on Africa. Where he argued that letting the continent use reliable energy doesn't mean a climate disaster, and that Africa can't sacrifice its future prosperity for what he called Western climate goals. Do presidents Ramaphosa, Ruto, uh, and few others on the African continent share these views? It's open for debate. Context that questions the solutions also matters. Not just only leadership, but also context that questions the solutions. Uh, the notion of African perspectives needs to be handled with care. Yes, the overall carbon contribution of Africa is less than 4%, but still differentiation within the continent is possible, even necessary sometimes. The Horn of Africa, for example, our contribution is just only 0.1%. So less than 4% for the African continent, but 0.1% for, for Horn of Africa. The list of the 20 states that together produce three quarters of global emissions contains only three African countries, South Africa, Nigeria, and Zambia, but it still holds some African countries. So differentiation becomes important, but it's important to know where those differentiations actually make sense. Now, in the context uh, of this conversation, the importance of traditional knowledge has been mentioned a few times. It's critical in climate change conversations. But I also wonder if some concepts, for instance, the concept that says the best available science is antithesis to traditional knowledge. We need to be able to question those solutions. Now, prioritization also matters. And I'm just gonna latch on to one point. Drought and flooding were the two extreme events, weather events that were mentioned quite a few times uh, this morning and this afternoon. They're absolutely critical for the African continent. They are the two main climate change related disasters that affect the rights of Africans and most, uh, Africans the most. Uh, droughts have affected more than 1.4 billion people between 2000 and 2019, with Africa being home to the highest number of droughts, 134, where 70 of which happened in East Africa. So quite a lot of the conversations that we're having, when we question the solutions, we also need to pay close attention to droughts and flooding, and I'm glad that those points came across uh, quite forcefully in the conversations that we had. One additional point that I would be remiss if I don't mention is that fragmentation remains to be a very important uh, and often neglected issue. We have the Committee of African Heads of States and Governments on climate change. We have the African Group of Negotiators, the African Ministerial Conference, the Department at the African Union on Blue Economy, the African Climate Commission, the Congo Basic Commission, the Sahel Climate Commission. They're dizzy. And I can't find anyone to convince me that 
there is cohesion in the work that is being done within the African Union as far as climate change law is concerned. Absolutely not. So fragmentation remains a problem, and we need to question the solutions in that regard. Now let me come to my final point. Whether it's on climate finance, whether it's on common but differentiated responsibilities, whether it's on the role of Africa in shaping international law, quite a lot of it is about politics, economics, uh, and power relations. But human rights is also absolutely important. Whether you want to talk about the most vulnerable groups, whether it's in relation to children, it's in relation to women, or persons with disabilities. When you talk about early warning systems, persons with disabilities have to be very central. Human rights plays a role. If you want to talk about accountability, not just only accountability of states, but also accountability of non-state actors, the business sector. I often call it the sins of the saviors. UNFPA, UNICEF, Human Rights Watch, a whole range of other players that also affect human rights in the context of climate change. If you want to talk about migration and conflict, you need to have some role for human rights. But I also don't want to overstate the role of human rights. And fortunately for us, we have an excellent panel that is coming up. They will be able to tie quite a number of the loose ends, if there are any that we might have mentioned this morning. So if I had to make a bet between questioning the solutions as being option one and not questioning the solutions as being option two, I would put my money on option one. And I like my chances. So let's please welcome the next panel. And I'm sure that they will be able to provide some weighty re reactions and reflections about the role of human rights uh, in relation to climate change. Thank you.